Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head down to Manchester and this is a brewery that I'm really excited to do a review for. So for the first time we are going to go to Manchester Marble Brewery and we're having a taste of their damage plan tonight. So this one's a West Coast IPA and it comes in at 7.1%. It is of course named after Dimebag Darrell who was the Pantera guitarist for a number of years before unfortunately he was killed, shot dead at one of his concerts and uh, this particular beer was a recommendation from Rob at Hop Scene. Manchester Marble Brewery, of course, are one that have a lot of kind of hype around them, I guess you could say. I, I went down to Manchester, of course, to meet some of my fellow beer tubers. We went to the pub and I did actually try this beer and their New Zealand IPA on tap when I was there, which was really quite nice, actually. So I know this is a good beer, but I'm looking forward to kind of doing a review of it on its own and thinking about it a little bit more. So as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer, but I will tell you, I do know this is a pretty good one. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward or the usual all the usual links are in the description below I can't speak tonight that includes the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Manchester Marble there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Manchester Marble then. So as I've told you before, Manchester Marble Brewery are of course based in Manchester and the brewery was founded by Jan Rogers back in 1997. But the brewery was originally based in the Marble Arch Inn and their first brew kit was a very small five barrel system that was installed by Brendan Dobbin who was involved at West Coast Brewing Company and apparently this was on display at the at the little pub behind glass windows so you could watch the whole thing going on as they were actually brewing the beer. But the pub itself is famous for its kind of ceramic interior and also the sloping floor that kind of follows the line of the hill outside. It's actually a really really nice little pub. It's very kind of typically English if that makes sense. If you ever you thought of a stereotypical English pub you go inside this place and it's exactly like that. But the building was built back in 1888 in the Ancoats area of the city which was quite a well known industrial area and it became a grade 2 listed building back in 1998. 1984 of course it was bought by John Worthington who was a local camera member but since 2000 they've also been producing vegetarian beers because a lot apparently the owner at the time was being told I think it was Jan was being told that, uh, oh, I've been vegetarian for years and I've never been able to drink beer since. But um, they, these guys started to develop a vegetarian beer and of course that's something that has been a little bit pioneering in the field. But in 2009 they expanded their brew kit to have a, to be a 12 barrel system so they had to do a few structural kind of arrangements to the building and change it around a little bit. But they also now have two other pubs as well. They're marble, they have the Marble Beer House in Chawton come Hardy and they also have 57 Thomas Street in the northern quarter of the city and their bigger, their brewing operation is now on Williamson Street as well because their, their beers proved to be quite popular they did have to move into a little industrial unit in Williamson Street and that's where most of their beers are still produced. I don't know if they still do some pilot batches and stuff like that in the original Marble Arch Inn uh, but as I say the majority of their beers are produced at Williamson Street as far as I know. So yeah that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. Have a look at the brewery website and things in the description below if you want to learn more. Follow them on Facebook. They are quite a prolific brewery. They've got quite a few different series of beer that you can get. You can buy them all on the these different pubs to take away. That's something that's novel to me in England that you can actually take beer away because you can't do that in Sweden normally. Um, but yeah, they do some really nice beers. The New Zealand IPA that I tried was nice. It has a very typically New Zealand name and of course that beer was brewed because I think it is the guy's name Glenn, James Glenn or something like that, or Glenn James, and he is from New Zealand, so he's very, very well versed in the New Zealand hops, of course, and this was one of the beers that he produced as well. So as I say, all you need to know about the brewery, check out the links in the description below. Let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So it says on the side here, Damage Plan IPA, brewed by Marble Brewery, Manchester, England. Store upright, cool, not chilled, that doesn't really particularly matter just now. But it says, name in tribute to the late, named in tribute to the late great Dimebag Darrow. This West Coast IPA layers down damaging amounts of tropical fruit hop character on a lean crisp malt base but yeah nicely presented beer that one and there you can see Dimebag's guitar on top here I forget what you call that again the I think it is known as the Dimebag these days I'm sure it was a BC Rich guitar if I'm remembering correctly 
Um, I can't honestly remember who the manufacturer of it was, but yeah, Dimebag's guitar is of course very, very distinctive. So as I say, 7.1% West Coast style IPA. I know this is a nice beer, so let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. A little bit of smoke as we open it up and let's get it out and into the glass. As I'm saying, you know, most breweries are focusing on the New England IPAs these days, so it is nice to kind of go back and have a taste of one of the West Coast ones every so often, but look how clear that beer is. That's one of the things, as I was saying, that's a vegetarian certified brewery. The little veggie thing is on the can here, the little V, but they still manage to keep their, their beers clear. Of course, it's sturgeon fish bladders that they use normally to kind of clear the beer, but as I say, um, Manchester Marbles beers do tend to stay pretty clear, although this one has one or two little bits of sediment in it. So as you can see, there's a finger or so of a frothy, perfect white head on this one. It's not even a creamy colour, it's definitely a perfect white head. And you can see it's almost like a kind of pale golden straw colour, little tiny bits of sediment just floating around in this one. If I put my fingers behind the glass though, you can see there is quite a bit of transparency to this beer. But it looks very, very nice. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. And you can smell some lovely tropical fruit notes off this. I'm pretty sure just from the aroma, there's a bit of citra coming in this one. So let's take a closer look and just see how we get on. Yeah, for me, definitely a little bit of citra in there. I wonder if there's mosaic as well or azaka or something like that. There's definitely, there's a little bit of a tangerine note and that'll be mosaic or azaka. Definitely, I think there's some citra in here too. You're getting mangoes. There's a bit of lychee as well. I want to say there's maybe a wee touch of passion fruit or grapefruit in there. That could be like Simcoe or something like that. Grapefruit you get from quite a few different hops actually. But I want to say there's some pineapple. I mean, that's making me wonder if it is mosaic. You know, mosaic always gives you some nice tangerine notes and a bit of pineapple I always find. And I'm definitely getting that from this beer. It's a juicy, the, the aroma on this one leans towards the kind of fruity, juicy side of things. There's a little bit of a kind of grassy floral note, but that's not very prominent. The aroma is most definitely juicy. And underneath the course, you can smell a little bit of that malt base as well. So it's quite, um, it's got a good bit of bready character too. When you sugar it up a little bit more, you start to get some biscuity and slightly caramelly sweetness out of it, which is nice. But it does taste, it does smell, sorry, like a really quite nice beer, this one. So take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma before you get stuck in. But it smells, as I say, this is more of a juicy IP. Lots of nice tropical fruit, bit of grapefruit, bit of passion fruit, I think. Tangerine oranges, mangoes, bit of lychee, pineapple, stuff like that. There's a lot of fruity notes coming out of this beer. It's a bit like a fruit, tropical fruit salad or something like that. So as I say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. But let's have a go at this beer then. So this is the Damage Plan, a West Coast IPA named after Dimebag Darrow by the guys at Manchester Marble Brewery down in Manchester here in England. So let's get stuck in. Slanger, skull. Yeah. As I remember, it's a pretty nice beer. I'm trying to remember whether it was keg or cask that I had this beer on, but I have to admit, it does taste a little bit more crisp out of the can from what I remember. And I have to admit that, you know, it's one thing I've never quite gotten into. When it comes to like English beers, of course, you've got the whole kind of cask conditioning thing. And I have to admit, just because it was Germany that I really got into beer, um, and I was I like the, the slightly more crisp quality, that kind of more cold, crisp thing. The English beers are always usually, when it comes to cask beers, they're always a little bit warmer and more smooth. For me, I'm just not such a great fan of that. I like the beers to be cooler and to just have a little bit more crispness to them. And this one, in the can conditioning, I think it does definitely have a little bit more of that. And I think it really suits this beer a bit more. It gives it that little refreshing edge, which is what you want from an IPA, to be honest. So yeah, it's nice, It's definitely a nice beer, this one. As you'd expect, the malt base on this one is pretty simple. You know, you've got a little bit of pale malt there. On top of that, you can feel some of the biscuity notes and right in the middle of your palate, you do have a slightly richer kind of caramelly flavour coming out of this beer, which is really, really nice. The whole malt base, is just, it just goes together very well. You do get a little bit of graininess coming out of it later on as the, as the, the flavour kind of mellows out a little bit, but it's, the, the malt base really suits this one. This beer is all about the hops, and that's what you want. That's what I love about the West Coast IPA. It's a shame that this style is taking a bit of a back seat at the moment in favour of the New England IPAs, but I'm sure it will start to rise to prominence in, uh, in a while again because it's, it's, it's a lovely beer style.
but yeah, that's a nice beer. So hoppy side of things, tiny little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you've got a little bit of that, you've got quite a bit of that floral quality in there. It's got a little bit of a spicy note to it, but overall it's quite a a kind of aromatic kind of floral note that's coming out of this one. As you go round the front curve of the palate, of course, it's a little bit lighter and grassy. And the where the fun happens with this beer is behind the front curve of the palate, of course. That's where you get this little oily bubble where all these nice kind of fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So yeah, with this one, Definitely a little bit of grapefruit in there. You can feel the grapefruit just kind of underpinning the beer. Mainly, it's I think it's more of a passion fruit. I do wonder if there's a bit of Simcoe in here. I think it's passion fruit that's kind of forming the base of this one. There's a little bit of a tangerine orange for me. I, th I do wonder. I do wonder if there's a bit of mosaic in here. But definitely from the flavour, I I reckon there's citra. I think I'm getting mangoes. And then as the flavour progresses, you start to get a little bit of the kind of papayas, uh, pineapples, light cheese sort of things. You get these complexities that you expect of like mosaic or of um, or of like citra or something like that. Those are the two hops I always find that give you some really nice tropical fruit complexities. And I'm pretty, I, going by the flavours, I reckon both of them are in this. I always like playing that game with beers. If you don't know the hops, try and guess which ones they are. But the main point to take away is that it's really, really nice, this one. The tropical fruit side of this, it leans a little bit more towards the darker side of things. The passion fruit has quite a bit of prominence. There's a bit of that darker grapefruit flavour in there, and some of the juicier notes start to come out a little bit later as well. But overall, it's a really, really nice beer, this one. I have to admit, I like how it comes across, just everything about it. Um, it's not over overly punchy in any one regard. Again, it's a little bit about how the flavour kind of goes together. The hops are a little bit more prominent. They've got that nice bitterness that you expect to the style. And for me, it has that kind of crisp flavour that you want. I always find the West Coast IPAs, you know, you do want them to have a little bit of that refreshing quality to them. And that's maybe why I was saying to you, um, for example, when it comes to the English relayos and stuff, I definitely prefer the darker beers and things like that. When it comes to IPAs and stuff, for me, it's American all the way. And New Zealand, of course, there's the New Zealand IPAs as well, right enough. But the American style of IPAs, for me, I definitely prefer to the English ones. I think the cast conditioning, that sort of warmer, slightly kind of thicker thing, it suits the darker beers. But when it comes to beers like this, I'm not a great fan of cast conditioning. I just think these beers are supposed to be a little bit light. You know, the lighter kind of styles are supposed to be refreshing. And the, the can conditioning for this, for me, is, is quite a bit better than the, uh, the cast conditioning one that I had. But it's definitely a nice beer. I think this one had a 96 overall on rate beer in terms of the West Coast IPA. In my mind, it definitely deserves that. Everything about this beer just goes together really well. I'm finding the malt base is getting a little bit um, sweeter. It's leaning a little bit more towards the biscuity side of things as I go further into this beer and as the flavour mellows out. But it's just really nice. There's not much more you can say about it than that. It's very kind of straight up the West Coast IPA style, but it's just very, very well done. So a big thumbs up to uh, Manchester Marble for this one. Uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say mid-bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth. It does have a little bit of a prickle, enough to give it that kind of crisp edge. It's a little bit oily, I would say. It's got a nice little bit of an oily character to it, this beer, but at the same time it's got a bit of wetness as well, which gives it a refreshing quality. Good little bit of hoppy bitterness. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs. Some nice kind of oily, juicy fruits out of the beer and a little bit of a kind of malty sweetness as well. It's got everything that you would want of the style and it's just very, very well done. So, you know, a big thumbs up to Manchester Marble Brewery on this one. I remember enjoying the beer even with the kind of cask conditioning, which as I said is not my favourite, but with the can... For me, it just works out really nicely. So if you get the chance to have a go at the damage plan, definitely have a taste at it. So, uh, And from what I've heard, they're going to get a new brewer soon as well. The guy from New Zealand um, has actually decided to go home, from what I gather. So, And this was one of his beers. So you will see some interesting things happening from Manchester Marble in the future, I'm sure. But have a go at this beer while you still can for the moment. But yeah, really lovely beer and I highly recommend it. I think that's a good way to finish off with this one. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Manchester Marble Brewery as well. And, uh, you know, have a let me know your thoughts on this beer. I think it's really, really nice. And of course, hail dime bag. But thank you again for watching. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media and things. But most importantly, have a go some of these damage plan beers and you will be seeing a few more Manchester beer reviews over the coming videos. Stand you just now.